we are at the stage where this guitar needs to be sanded. I want to bring it to within um, spitting distance of the final sanded finish before I complete the fine inlay work, various dots and logos and things that will be going on. And uh, I'm going to do that now. The You cannot rush this. You can't skip a step, you can't skip a grit, you... If you... If you sand a guitar down to 120 grit and then jump to 400 or 600, you will still have 120 grit scratches in the bottom. In the bottom. <laughs> uh, at the bottom of your sanding. I can't talk. Help! Um, now, you might not see those, but you put a coat of lacquer on, or a coat of oil, especially on white wood like uh, maple or ash, and suddenly what looked invisible pops up and smacks you in the face, and you have to go back and uh, not only resand your guitar, you've got to strip finish off it as well. And uh, guitar building is all about patience, it's all about um, attention to detail and, and doing things step by step by step and uh, it might feel like a waste of time but in the end you are guaranteed to have a better quality instrument. I will spend an entire month building a guitar or longer and uh, you know it means that I can only build a dozen or so guitars a year on my own but it's worth it because every guitar I build is as good as it is possible for me to make it. And, uh, and that is worth it. That's why I have the, the clientele that I have. Uh, now, the unfortunate truth is that the last 5% of work that you do can make or break the instrument. This is the first thing that your customer will see. This is the first thing that the reviewer will see. And if you have skipped a grit or a grade or don't know very much about finishing and your finish isn't that great. It does not matter. It doesn't matter if you've if you've used a 500 pound piece of doesn't weigh 500 pounds. A 500 great British pound piece of Clara walnut for your body. If it's got a bad finish on it or if it's still got scratches on it, it's going to look like firewood and people aren't going to be willing to to buy your instruments for what they're worth. You know, a month of time, sweat, and often blood. Um, if I haven't bled on an instrument, I don't really think that it's completed. Um, it, yeah, it's not, it's, you've got to spend a little bit more time at the end. When I first started, I used to, I used to skip this. I used to try and rush the final stages because I wanted, understandably, to play. I wanted to hear it. I wanted to... Uh, show my friends and say, hey, check out what I built. It's a six-string bass. Wow, I'm great. And and I wasn't because it didn't look good. It had nice maple, it had a nice body, and it felt okay and, and all of the above. But the finish and the fit and the screws and the tiny, tiny, tiny details that are the last thing that you do wasn't right. And... Uh, my guitars, it took a lot longer for me to start making a modicum of a living until I learned that. And uh, so now I, I, <laughs> I'm preaching to you, spend more time at this stage than you would, uh, than you normally would, and, and it, it will pay out. It, it absolutely will. Imagine that every single guitar you make, every single thing that you make with your hands is going to be reviewed by the top magazine or uh, YouTube video reviewer on the planet and uh, that will see you right. Um, so anyhow, back to sanding. There are various different sandpapers and uh, rasps and files and all sorts of things uh, that are abrasive and uh, it comes down to personal preference. You can buy paper-backed silicon carbide stuff and uh, I use I've got tens of meters of it uh, 
that I use quite a lot. And one piece of that, there we go, see, <laughs> you don't have to look very far to find a piece of paper. High flex finishing paper, electro coated progressive bond trademark. Um, what can you do? This stuff is fine, it works all right, doesn't last very long. The grit comes off, uh, it's, you know, it's bog standard sandpaper. And this is why I buy it by the 50 meter roll. You can also buy my personal favorite, J-Flex. Now this is a cloth backed stuff. Um, this is by Hermes. Uh, no hyperbole on the back, it <laughs> literally just uh, says what it is. And uh, this stuff lasts much, much, much longer. And uh, you can use one piece of it and it will, the, the grit stays on the cloth backing and you, you know it's it's great I, I prefer this for fine for final finishing and you can go right up to well various different grades this is another another brand of cloth back stuff this was a bargain a, a wood turner friend of mine bought too much uh, what does this say rhino grip red line um, made in Portugal oh, there we go with a black rhino on the back from Portugal. Anyway, I I would say experiment. Go to Axminster or uh, your or Yandles or <laughs> your supplier of choice. Buy various different types of paper. There's uh, some stuff out there that I haven't had you know a chance to try out yet. In fact, I'm going to do a video just talking about sandpapers one day. And uh, we'll try everything out and do a, a, a test. And uh, yes, there's all sorts of stuff, and it's well worth experimenting to find what works for you. I spent five or six years buying the cheapest possible sandpaper because I didn't have very much money. And uh, to be honest, if I had spent that money on one roll of J Flex, uh, I would have uh, I would have been much better off. Uh, so, yes, false false economy, uh, as is often the case it, with tools and machinery and all of that. Don't buy cheap. If you can, if you can stretch out your pounds a little bit more, buy something a little bit more expensive. It'll last longer. It'll it'll be better for you. Uh, anyhow, I have I've ranted. I apologise. This was supposed to be a video of me showing you how to sand a guitar, and. Uh, here it is. Take your sandpaper. Sand. Sort it. Um, we will get on to talking about random orbital sanders next. The random orbital sander is the machine of machines. It is, without a doubt, the best and greatest time saver that I have. The day that I had my first random orbital sander, it was an epiphany. So, I'm starting with the neck. It is by far the roughest uh, part of the guitar. The rest of it's been uh, pretty much sanded already in the process of carving it. Uh, this has got rasp and file marks all over. And, uh, and I need to remove them. So, I could use a random orbital sander is the tool of tools and uh, I love them but uh, in this case I'm going to use some 120 grit uh, J-Flex. This is probably not quite 120 grit anymore because I've been using it for several weeks um, but nonetheless this is going to get rid of some of the main scratches and help keep my shape. Uh, No, that feels like more like 180. So let's find something else. Hey, hey. Now 
Now this is going to get rid of the the bulk of the uh, rasp marks and then I'm going to move on to the random orbital and uh, finish up from there. Guitar building is an incredibly tactile thing. Your hands and your fingers are much more perceptive than your eyes are. And uh, yes, it's very important to fondle your wood. Um, I'm going to go home now. I'm moving on to using the wondrous random orbital sander. Uh, as the name suggests, it's orbital, but there's randomness in that orbitality. Um, and this means that there are less scratches left and it cuts much faster than standard, well, standard orbital sanders. And uh, I love them, I love them. If you find a good one, and uh, these little Makitas really are, then stick with them. Uh, one day I shall buy myself a fist tool and uh, I think I'll have, uh, be in heaven at that point. Anyhow, protection. Um, well, this isn't protection, this is entertainment. Uh, you have to uh, wear a dust mask. This catches dust, but the finest particles always get through and past and under and around and uh, dust is carcinogenic and will kill you. So, wear a dust mask and, uh, and amuse yourself with some good music and I'll have these on as well. I have tinnitus from too many years playing loud music. So, uh, there we go. I will see you on the other side.